How's it going guys? My name is Arthur and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go through part two of the JP Morgan quantitative research virtual internship task. This task builds on the natural gas price prediction model that we built in task one with the ultimate goal of this task is to create a script that will spit out a value of a contract. Honestly, the hardest part about this task, I think, is to make sure that the script from task one is able to be integrated into our code here. They provide us a bunch of information for this task, so, so it's important to try and incorporate all the moving parts. So in this video, I'm just gonna go through the code, try to explain what I've done here, uh, and we can work through it together. So as we get going here, just a quick refresher. Basically, last time we fitted this linear sign model uh, to go over the historical data, and that allows us to then uh, predict uh, future gas prices. So basically this allows the input date to actually be a date time rather than just having an integer. Uh, and then the second part of my update was making sure that if we have that date in our historical data, that means we have an actual historical price. So we can spit out that actual price. And if not, then we will use the model to predict. So. This is just a quick update on what I did there. Feel free to read through this a little closer for your own kind of benefit there. So with task two, just a brief overview. Again, here we're trying to calculate the value of the contract. And essentially we are just seeing, can we inject a bunch of gas to be stored? and then at a later date, take it out and sell it at a higher price. Now, that's just a very, that's like a very simple way of looking at it. This has a bunch of additional costs, which makes this really complicated, which made this kind of annoying and confusing for me to work through. Please let me know if you guys have any contention points with some of my calculations here. Uh, definitely, I would be happy to hear out your suggestions. But as we walk through this, basically, I decided to add, I think it was six different variable inputs that we can have. So we have our injection dates, withdrawal dates. We have an injection rate, which I think in the instructions they didn't really push, but I think it's a valuable addition and I will explain as we go through the code. We have injection withdrawal costs, max storage volume, and then storage costs per month. Essentially, you can think about this function as starting from zero, uh, you have a bunch of additions or subtractions, and then at the end, you're gonna have a, a total total value of the contract. Here, I actually wrote it as total profit, um, but the contract could also be negative, which suggests we probably don't wanna pursue injecting and withdrawing gas uh, for, those, for those dates. Feel free to read through this code on your own time. I will just try and highlight some key points. So let's start off with basically injection price uh, and withdrawal price. So this, comes from our code from task one. So essentially we have our predicted gas price and we have our date that is coming from this injection date and withdrawal date. So these are our inputs uh, up here and you can see at the bottom as an example, this is where that came from. So that gets put into our pricing model and for our injection price, uh, we get some type of price based on our model. So next we wanna think about is, num is month in store. So this is basically just some quick uh, arithmetic using uh, our date time format and I couldn't figure out a way to keep this in months. So I actually have it in days uh, at the beginning and then I just divide it by this, you know, average number of months or like, uh, actually this probably should be average number of days per month is what I meant. So that's our number here is like 30 days. Uh, that way we get, you know, X amount of months in storage. By the way, these print statements are really helpful in figuring out how the numbers are all through the model. Uh, I'll just, just wanted to highlight that. So next we have total injection volume. This is kind of a confusing line that I wanna talk about briefly. The code here basically says that we take the minimum of months in store times the injection rate and max storage volume. This basically stops us from a situation where the max storage is exceeded. So next up we have our cost of injection. Now the first part is very simple. We have our total injection volume times our injection price. And now this second part I think is important, uh, which is not that clear in the instructions, is basically we also have a cost associated with injection and withdrawal. So I have that as an input variable here and I just say 
we have a total injected volume. Uh, I divide this by 1 million because I'm, I'm, I'm assuming an injection withdrawal cost per million. So that's something we want to multiply um, by the number of millions uh, of um, MMBTU that come through here. Uh, so that's how we get our cost of injection. So as I'm looking at this, uh, I also realize that so we have a total revenue from sale, which didn't account for that withdrawal cost. So actually, uh, I just realized that we need to add that in here. So I just plonked that in. Everything is exactly the same because we're just removing all the, the total volume that we had. Then we come through, we have a total storage cost, which is pretty simple. Total number of uh, months that it has been stored for times the storage cost per month. And then we add this all up with our uh, total profit being revenue from sale minus cost of injection minus cost of storage. So there you have it. That is the code for uh, our contract price. And essentially we can check out if it works by giving our variables some numbers. So for injection date, we have this, which is I think part of our historical date. For our withdrawal date, we have something in the future that the model probably has to predict. Uh, and then, as I mentioned before, we have injection rates and withdrawal costs, uh, et cetera. You can change these depending on the situation. And if you plug those in right here, uh, you essentially, we can see the output down below. So we can see all the print lines here as well. And the final value of the contract uh, is going to be just under 3 million, basically 2.7, uh, 2.8 million dollars. So there you have it. That is my stab at the JP Morgan uh, quantitative research task two. Please let me know if you guys have any questions down in the comments below. Uh, and let me know if you have any suggestions or if you guys found a better way to do this. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.